Hello and welcome back to this special lecture series. My name is Temur Khan and I'm an attorney at law. Today we are going to be covering the famous case Khwaja Ahmed Tariq Rahim versus Federation of Pakistan. Uh, now one of the interesting features of the Haji Muhammad Saifullah Khan case, a case we discussed earlier, was that uh, the date on which this case was brought before the Honorable Supreme Court, it was already on a date after the 17th of August, the date on which General Zia died tragically in a plane crash. And so even though the order issued under Article 58 2B was signed by General Zia, Many historians believe that had General Zia been alive, the, the verdict of the Honorable Supreme Court in the Haji Muhammad Saifullah Khan case would have been different. Now, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court uh, threw a short order on 5th October 1988 in Haji Muhammad Saifullah Khan case decided firstly that the 58-2B order itself uh, did not meet or satisfy the requirements of the article and so it was set aside but it did not restore the assemblies keeping in view that all the political parties now had gotten on board to contest the forthcoming general elections. Now the general elections of the 1988 in contrast to the previous elections of 1985 were to be conducted and carried out on party basis and this had become available in view of uh, the recent ruling of the Honorable Supreme Court in two of some of the most important public interest constitutional uh, litigation cases of the year 1988. The first one was the Benazir Bhutto Election Commission case in which she challenged some of the amendments which had been introduced in the Political Parties Act of 1962 in 1979 and 1985. Uh, where requirements such as compulsory registration or the fact that election commission could cancel the registration and certain provisions which barred some of the members of Pakistan People's Party to contest the elections were challenged and the Supreme Court ruled in their favor on some of their prayers. And the second important case was the election symbol case in which the Supreme Court interpreted Article 17 and said that the expression right to form an association would also include the right of a political party to contest elections under its party manifesto and party flag thus paving the way for party based elections. Now the general elections of 1988 were held on the 16th of November in which the Pakistan People's Party secured some 94 seats out of 207 and IJI Islami Jamuri Etihad managed to secure 56 seats. So ne neither of these two parties uh, managed to secure enough seats to form a government. Now uh, under the Eighth Amendment which gave constitutional recognition to the RCO of 1985, the President still reserved the right to appoint any person as Prime Minister in whose opinion if he felt uh, that he commanded the majority of confidence in the National Assembly. So apart from appointing someone who did manage to secure the confidence of the National Assembly, this right was given to the President up to 1990. And so IGI being led by uh, Nawaz Shri felt that Ghulam Isaac Khan, who uh, the Chairman of Senate and had taken over uh, the office as Acting President after the demise of General Zia, would certainly support Nawaz Sharif but Ghulam Isa Khan had some other plans and he knew in forecast that uh, presidential elections would be coming soon and since IGI was already supporting him if PPP would also come his way his uh, election success would be rather secured and so he chose uh, Muhtarma bin Azir Bhutto uh, uh, to now take up the office as Prime Minister. Uh, now rolling the clock forward in terms of our respective case on the 6th of August 1990, uh, the President Ghulam Isa Khan, through an order issued under Article 58 2B, dissolved the National Assembly and dismissed the Prime Minister. And so, in view of this decision and this order, this famous case uh, takes up. Uh, the reasons which were given by President Ghulam Isa Khan in dismissing the government of Benazir Bhutto in exercise of powers exercisable under Article 58 2B were namely that firstly the utility and the efficacy of National Assembly had been defeated by internal dissensions and friction because of practices such as nepotism and horse trading. Uh, the National Assembly 
had lost the confidence of the people, that there was a lot of deadlock in between the federation and the provinces. Constitutional institutions such as the Council of Common Interests and uh, the National Finance Commission were unable to operate because they were not allowed to do so. That under Article 148.3, the, the federation was failing to secure and keep the peace situation intact in the province of Sindh. The merit of the civil services of Pakistan was also being affected. And uh, many other individual grounds were given which formed the basis for issuing this order. Now, initially this order was challenged before the Honorable Lahore High Court. And the Lahore High Court uh, dismissed the petition and upheld the order uh, of Ghulam Isaq Khan. And this was done so uh, by the order dated 14th of October 1990. And against this uh, judgment, uh, the appeal was filed before the Honorable Supreme Court by Khwaja Ahmed Tariq Rahim, who had served as the Federal Minister for Parliamentary Affairs in the government which had just been dismissed. Now, before the Honorable Supreme Court, the arguments which were presented by the petitioner were firstly that uh, this uh, power which was exercisable by the President was uh, uh, not an absolute power, that this was a qualified power. And since it has already been held in Khwaja Ahmed Tariq Rahim by Justice none other than Shafi ur Rahman, that unless there is a stalemate or there is a breakdown of constitutional machinery, uh, such a power should not be exercised. More so when there were different options available to the President. For instance, under Article 233, he could have imposed an emergency. Or whether under Article 184.1, if there was any difference between the Federation and the province, the same could have been resolved dealt with by the Honorable Supreme Court under Section 133A uh, of CRPC, the military could have been called somewhat to act in aid of uh, civil power similar to Article 145 or to maintain peace. However, none of these options was exercised. The President just chose to dismiss the government. But the Supreme Court, uh, after examining certain other materials, uh, pointed out that all of these options were only exercisable on the advice of the Prime Minister and were not otherwise available to the President. So, in terms of uh, this respective point, uh, the Supreme Court really did not favour the petitioner. The, the second point which was forwarded by the petitioner was that as per the objective resolution which had now become a substantive part of the constitution under Article 2A pursuant to the 8th Amendment, the power was to be exercisable by the elected representatives who would as such represent the people of Pakistan. And it was rather strange that uh, a person, a president who is indirectly elected could simply dismiss this whole exercise and the one person in whom confidence has been reposed by the people. But the Supreme Court again uh, referred to uh, certain other events, certain other constitutions. Uh, it also narrated certain events in the United Kingdom history when uh, the government was dismissed twice uh, by the king. Uh, the, the Supreme Court also referred to uh, certain incidents where the Governor General of Australia and in Germany the Chancellor simply dismissed a government and that this power could be exercisable by the political sovereign, by the head of the state. So it, it was no different. This whole exercise with Article 58 b was done keeping in view certain provisions which were prevalent uh, elsewhere as well. As far as the third ground of many other individual grounds of corruption, nepotism, horse trading, uh, Shafi Rahman, who uh, wrote the majority opinion, said that individually they could perhaps could not have been counted as forming the basis for this order, but collectively they could be considered uh, to have formed the basis. Now, on the question of Article 58 2B and its true import, the Supreme Court delved back into the history. Uh, Counsel Sharifuddin Pirzada assisted and traced the, the very origin from Simon Commission, where it was written that the expression cannot be carried in accordance with the provisions and the breakdown of constitutional machinery were rather synonymous. This language having been taken from Article 45 of the Government of India Act 1935. And so the Supreme Court held that uh, it isn't the case that this is somewhat of an absolute power, that this is a qualified power and that it would, the true import would be that it would be complete inability 
uh, to form or maintain any ministry in office that uh, if there is an actual or an imminent breakdown of constitutional machinery as distinguished from uh, the failure to follow a particular provision but numerous sustained and pervasive numerous provisions if they have been unable to be followed creating the impression that the country is not being so much governed by something constitutional but something extra constitutional and this was the true import which was given to article 58 to be by uh, justice shafi ur rahman uh, the interesting thing to note about all of these article 58 to be cases is that with each every case the definition and interpretation of article 58 to be underwent a bit of transition and new meanings were given to uh, the expression employed by article 58 to be for instance in the first haji mohammed saifullah khan case shafi ur rahman said that if there is a deadlock stalemate or breakdown of constitutional machinery this would be the criteria however in khwaja ahmed tariq rahim certain other words were added that it not need not be an actual breakdown even if there is a imminent breakdown of constitutional machinery nonetheless it would satisfy the requirements of article 58 to be now uh, this uh, bench which heard this case comprised of some 12 judges justice shafi ur rahman wrote the majority opinion many of the judges concurred with his opinion some of the judges however gave their own separate contra opinions one of such judges was justice abdul shukur al salam and he held in his opinion that the power exercisable under article 58 to be was so extraordinary and keeping in view article 417 where general zia was uh, by name uh, uh, inserted in the constitution he held that this power to dissolve the national assembly was to be reserved only by this one person because he was named in the constitution and so with his death this power would not devolve upon his successor uh, apart from this he also held that uh, if a situation has indeed arisen in which the government of the federation cannot be carried in accordance with the provisions of the constitution then the fault would lie with the president and the cabinet why should the national assembly be dissolved he further held that there were different options available to the president that he could have imposed uh, emergency Uh, under article 233 or he could have required the prime minister to perform his duties or even required the prime minister to obtain a vote of no confidence but to dissolve the national assembly is a, a step which perhaps should not have been exercised without availing himself of the other options uh, uh, available to the president another justice justice rustam sidwa Uh, supported the opinion of justice shafi ur rahman he however gave a separate note and the most important point he made was that we need not wait till the constitutional machinery actually breaks down because that situation would be too late it would be to the detriment of the public interest but even if there is an imminent breakdown then in such a situation the president would be justified to invoke his powers under uh, article 58 to b Uh, another justice justice sajad ali shah gave his contra opinion and uh, he uh, supported some of the uh, uh, grounds which had been taken up by justice abdul shukur al salam and uh, justice sajad ali shah firstly said that uh, in terms of this whole question of horse trading which has been used uh, and has been employed by Uh, in the supreme court judgment under the political parties act 1962 there is a specific section 8b which deals with disqualification and that firstly the leader of the parliamentary party has to report this to the election commission the election commission would make its decision whether it, uh, the person should be disqualified and then an appeal would lie before the supreme court so before all of this process you cannot hold that some person defected or engaged in horse trading until it has been proven through the right channels under the respective statute Uh, apart from uh, this submission he also held uh, that uh, there were many options which were available to the president he could have addressed both houses he could have sought the opinion of the honorable supreme court he could have imposed emergency he could have required the prime minister to obtain a, a vote of no confidence however to simply dismiss would be rather an extreme option and he also focused Uh, the, upon the meaning of article 58 to be uh, holding that this is a qualified power 
and that uh, the president firstly has to form an opinion and f that process of formation of an opinion is essential before he can exercise his discretion as was earlier held and so uh, he gave his contra opinion that based on the facts and circumstances that this did not uh, uh, warrant for issuance of an order under article 58 to be as per which the government of Benazir was dismissed. So we're going to cut short our lecture here today and uh, in our next lecture we will take up the famous Nawaz Sharif case. Thank you very much.